Don Revy is the great enigma of British football. A man of fierce loyalty and patriotism, yet he brought on himself an onslaught of criticism when he deserted his post as manager of England at a critical moment and took a highly paid job in the Middle East. He has now lived there since 1977 in seemingly contented exile, with a luxurious house, servants, and the financial well-being his start in life so conspicuously lacked. Dubai is one of the tiny oil-rich emirates on the Persian Gulf, where traditional Arab ways of life are fighting a rearguard action against the arrival of vast wealth and the Western influences that have followed it. It was never like that when Don Revy was a boy. I lived for nothing else. We're in back-to-back -back houses. Uh, we played with cloth balls in the street if we couldn't fa afford a, a tennis ball or something else to play with. Um, I went to Middlesbrough football ground with my father from being six. Wolf Manor is one of my great idols, but really, uh, really had to rough it uh, in the days in the North East when I was a kid. I wanted to be a great player, I wanted to play for England, and uh, fortunately I did. Unfortunately, I got football of the year and many things as a player. And then when I was thinking about the end of my career, when I was 33, 34, I wanted to be a manager and I wanted to be the best in the game. When I talk about professionalism, I talk about not having sex there two nights before a match and the players used to laugh at me, but that was the way I used to think, and the right food and the right steaks and the right greens and they want to learn every day something new. And that's how we were at Leeds United. And that's why they were such a great side and that great ability too. I loved every one of them. Um, we would have died for each other during that period of 10 years. The staff, the players, everybody in the club. There was such a bond that nobody could break it. Because seeing you on the, um, on the touchline in those days, you seemed to be suffering with them almost. Every ball, every tackle, everything for 90 minutes I suffered with them. Don now looks back on his departure for the Middle East as the low point of his life. I think that was the saddest day. Uh, we were crying, they were crying. And we got on the plane, we didn't know what we were coming to. Um, we'd been out and visit the place, but... Um, we never really knew what the life was going to be like or how long we'd be in or what the football was really going to be like and what kind of a job I was taking. And we left under this tremendous barrage of, of criticism from the press. And, um, it was a day that um, will live with me for the rest of my life. Um, the sadness of it, to leave our children like that, and to believe in England, um, because after all I'm an Englishman and proud of it, um, was a bad day. Don Revy's reputation soon took another knock when the Daily Mirror ran a series called The Revy File, which made allegations about the way he ran Leeds United. Don has served a writ on the Daily Mirror, and on his lawyer's advice, he declines to discuss the allegations. Together with his treatment over the England managership, they've made his relations with the press anything but cordial. Some of your stern critics said that you are a very upright, honourable man in every way, but you have a weakness for money, and, they, and that you sold out. Um, well, the people who are saying that about me, uh, James, are possibly people that don't know me. Um, I'm only concerned, really, about family, children, grandchildren, and my friends. And I think if you had them on your programme, they'd tell you a completely different story um, about the other side of Don Revy. Don and his wife Elsie have now lived in the Middle East for nearly five years. Regular visitors to the spectacular Revy home in Dubai include their son Duncan with his wife and children. The strength of Don Revy's family feelings is clear to anyone who knows him. He puts his satisfaction at their successes higher than any of his own triumphs in football. But the proudest moment of my life was when I went to Cambridge to see Duncan get his degree. Um, to see him qualify in law and go through all the schools, Repton and Leeds Grammar School and things like this. And to see him that day um, uh, get his degree was absolutely fantastic. What, even more than some of the great triumphs? Yeah, been? more than anything that I've ever had here. Yeah. At Leisure Land, created at a cost of millions in the desert outside the capital, there's the kind of pool with wave machine you'd hardly think necessary with the warm blue waters of the Persian Gulf only minutes away. A skating rink is another matter. That's something only technology can supply when the temperature outside is over 100 in the shade. 
Leisureland is linked to the Al Nasser Football Club, which Don Revy has managed since leaving the Emirates national side. Though the players are all amateurs, Al Nasser's facilities are way beyond what English professional clubs can expect. Today there's a local derby against another Dubai team, played on synthetic turf. The crowds here are as partisan as you'd find anywhere. Don's commitment to the game is as wholehearted as ever. But he admits he misses the special excitements of English Saturday afternoon football. Um, the thing I miss most of all, I think, is, um, is the Saturday afternoon, um, when the ground used to be crackling at Leeds United at 2 o'clock and there was all this excitement and buzz. And, um, you know, the old tummy used to roll a bit. And, but you knew you got good players and a good team and the old place used to be electric. And I missed that. It was not to be Al Nasser's day. They lost 3-1. And in the dressing room afterwards, Don did what he even had to do sometimes at Leeds. Put the heart back into a beaten side. Right. We lost 3-1. But you've got to be honest with yourself. We gave three goals away, didn't we? Let's be honest. We gave them three goals starts. Really bad, bad goals. But the thing about it, what you did, you went out the second half and you picked it up and you kept on battling and fighting, you got one back and you might have had two or three back. You might have got a draw of the game and finished on penalties. But it just didn't work out that way. So if you all have a couple of days rest now, come in Saturday night, we've a lot to talk about, many things, because next year we've a lot of work to put in, we've a lot more to learn, and the people that want to do it will be all right. Don's lifestyle is now that of an active man who no longer has to strain every nerve in the search for success. After several years in the Middle East, he has the kind of financial independence he must have dreamed of in his poverty-stricken boyhood in Middlesbrough. There's only one thing to spoil the idyll, the memory of not seeing the England team through to the bitter end of their World Cup campaign. Looking back now, that was a big mistake um, in my life. I think if I was doing it all over again, I'd do it completely different. I would say to the Arabs, um, would you please wait six months? I thought that the offer might not be there in six months' time um, to help my family and kids and no grandkids. Um, and I'd made the decision to um, to move, and I did it. And um, I think I got a lot of stick, and I think a lot was deserved because it was my mistake that I shouldn't have possibly left until the qualifying matches were over. And I felt, and there was a lot of people inside the Football Association, um, that I couldn't work with, and it was hard work for the three years I was there battling uh, certain people in certain committees, that um, if I didn't qualify, um, then I would have got the sack just like Alf Ramsey. And right in the middle of that period, where things weren't going too well, and it looked as though it was going to rest solely on goal difference with Italy, which it did at the finish, only three goals difference, they both had the same number of points, um, that I would have got the sack. <clears throat> this offer came along, um, and I decided to take it. Don Revy gives every impression of thoroughly enjoying his palatial exile on the Persian Gulf. As for his reputation back in England, probably the football establishment will never forgive him for leaving the country as he did. But with few exceptions, players and managers have, perhaps conceding that they might well have done the same themselves. Don is undecided as to when he's finally going to come home. But he has no plans and no need ever again to face the pressures of top-class English football. I think I've worked very hard um, um, in football and in life, and I've put a lot of time and a lot of dedication. Um, I haven't seen the family grow up. Um, Duncan and Kim were brought up by Elsie and educated by Elsie, and I didn't see them. Um, I was too wrapped up in being successful uh, with Leeds United at that time. And I would like to go back and see the children and the grandchildren and play a bit of golf and go to some big sporting occasion, but I think I'd like to have an interest in football and try and give something back at the lower level, um, where there was no pressure involved, to give me an interest four to five nights a week. So we might see you back in a, in, in a few years' time? Yes, in a nice quiet place, just enjoying myself. 